Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing? Hope you're doing well. Welcome back to Go On The Run. And today I want to kick off um, the first of that miscellaneous video that I spoke about in the last video. If you didn't watch the last video, shame on you. Um, but at the end of that video, I said basically that until I can sort of predict my time a little bit better and have a little bit more time, I don't want to continue um, with the next thing we were going to work on, which was going to be Kubernetes. And so we just finished Docker. And so I figured, let me do some um, filler videos. And so that I'm going to consider miscellaneous things. They're going to be things that we re either revisit things that we've worked on already or just things to come that I want to give you a sneak peek at or any random thing that I can think of or I can throw at you. So that's what the fiddle videos are. Now, um, Nats, as you're seeing on my screen here, is what I'm going to be covering today. And um, don't worry, this is going to be sort of a few videos in the miscellaneous as filler videos that I'm going to talk about Nats, but all of them are just going to give you sort of like a taste. But much later on, when I have a little bit more time and after Kubernetes and stuff, when we get down that path of microservices and so on, I'm going to have a whole um, section like all we did on Docker where there were several videos. Well, they're going to be a whole section on Nats. So don't worry. The only thing you should really worry about is how soon I can get that done. But if you have time on your hand, that's going to happen. All right, before we jump in and start talking about Nats, I need you to do me a huge favor. If you're here and you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Join the family. This family is very welcoming. It's awesome. Just look at the comments on the channel. Many of the videos, people just love the material. So you're gonna like it too. Um, check it out. And if at the end of watching this video, you don't like it, well then, hey, sorry. But I think you're gonna like it. So subscribe, become part of the family. Since you're subscribing, hit the notification bell so you're gonna know when I post videos. And so you'd wanna be aware of that. And instead of having to check, just subscribe, hit the notification bell. And when I post those videos, you're gonna get notified. That's gonna be exactly like what we're gonna cover in Nats just now. You're gonna see that we can do a subscription, that every time a message come in, we can handle it instead of us having to go and ask, do you have a next message? Do you have a next message? Do you have a next message? So you wanna be doing the asynchronous subscription so that the YouTube take off the burden and send you the notification. All right, so last thing is comment on the videos. Show that engagement. Let me know if you like the material. Let me know if you like this. Let me know if you like it. Let me know that you're excited to see the full series. So if I see that a lot of people are interested in this stuff, I kind of like going to be like, oh, you know, people are waiting for this stuff. Let me try and prioritize it. Right. And so I'm not saying I'm not going to prioritize it otherwise, but the more people I see that engage, I'm willing and asking for stuff that puts it on the radar. Right. So just makes sense. So let me know through the engagement, comment on the videos. Let me know what's going on. What are you thinking? How do you find the material? What do you want me to cover? What do you want me to show more of? What do you want me to show less of? All right. With that said, thanks again. Let's jump into the material. Okay. So what is NATS? NATS is a um, messaging application. And it says here, NATS Connective Technology for Adaptive Edge and Distributed Systems. But really, what it is, is a messaging system. It's an application that allows you to easily exchange messages between um, different components. And so what you can do is fire up NAS and just start sending messages to it as a publisher, and then have another application subscribe to those messages and get them. Now, you might be thinking, well, Viral, didn't we do something like this with gRPC? Well, yes and no. There are a bunch of other use cases and things that you're going to see later on. But for now, it just suffice to say that um, that's what NATS is. You can certainly click on Learn More, and it's going to take you to the documentation. And it's, the doc is very, very nice and straightforward. I mean, you can just sit on and just read this stuff and it's, uh, it, you know, it's like really, really nice. And that's very, 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 very technical. I mean, of course it covers the technology and how to use it, but it's just very, very re readable. I, I really like this documentation. And of course, if you just want to get started, you can click on get started and it take you into um, how you can download and start using it. Now, I'm assuming that oh, if you are watching this channel, you've been walking through my videos and by now you should have, um, Docker install. So 
you can use Docker to run it, or like I say, you can download it and just run it. I'm gonna show both just in case there's somebody out there who's happened to come to the channel now and didn't get around to installing Docker. So let's go here and I'm gonna be in my command line. And so this directory is our, you know, going to run directory with all the other good stuff that's there. We'll go to the miscellaneous directory. I don't really need to go there to run NAS. Let's um, now try and run NAS. And so I'm going to run it two ways. I'm going to run it both from Docker and from the command line using the binary, just in case somebody jump in at this point and don't have Docker set up. So let's start off first by using Docker. So we assume that you have Docker. And then if you don't have Docker, just wait a few seconds and I'll get to you a minute or two. So if you look, you can see it how the command to run through Docker is first you pull it and then you run it. But people will be using Docker now. So if you just run this command, it does the pull if it's not there. So I'm going to run it somewhat similar to that, but not exactly. I'm going to say Docker run and minus minus RM, which means clean up my um, container after I'm finished with it. And then I'm going to say, um, minus, um, let's do minus minus IT also. Well, I'm going to do minus D to run it as a daemon. And then I'm going to do minus P4222 to bind it locally on my laptop to port 442. But then within the Docker container, I want to run it, bind it to 4222 also, which is what's being exposed or the port that's been opened by the NAS application. I'm also specify yet another port and that's going to be port 8222 and then I'm going to say bind it to port 8222 within the container. So I'm going to bind two ports and then I'm going to give it the name NATS and then I think that's all I'm going to say run NATS and that should be it. It's going to run it as a daemon. Now if I want I can do docker logs minus f for follow and I can say follow this NATS um, container the thing that I named NATS. And so we can see, you know, it started NATS server version 2.2.1 and then um, Git. And you could see some other things here. These are the things we don't really care about. This cluster name um, is this number that's generated allow you to connect multiple um, NATS server into a cluster, but we're not going to worry about that now until we get into actually doing some NAT stuff. The interesting things here is to see this. We can see it all. We bind port 8220, um, 222, and this is for HTTP monitoring, and port 4222, where it's going to listen for client connection. There's also another port here, 6222, and this is a road connection. So we're not using that right now. I did not bind to that, so we can ignore that. So I'll leave that up open there, and I will split my terminal this way. And so already NAS is up and running, and that's good enough. Um, so for people who are using Docker, you're set. You can sit back and wait. Now, if you don't have um, Docker, you can see you can install it in these different ways. You can use, if you're in Windows, you can use this thing, Choco. If you're in on a Mac like me, you can do brew install NAT server, um, but you can also just download a build from here. And so they show you a curl command here that you can just simply run to download the NAT server. So I went to the release page and so let's see, um, there should be a binary somewhere here that we can download. And so uh, let's see, uh, let's look for, in this case, I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna look for a Mac binary and I'm not on an ARM or anything. So it's AMD 6 to 4. I'm gonna just get the, it doesn't matter if you get gzip or not or tar, depending on which um, thing you wanna export. Or, um, extract so that's it and so this is already downloaded on my system I can move this from the download directory and it's called NATS and I could move it here and so we can see it and then so I can do unzip and I can say NATS and so you can see inflating and it gives me the license file readme file and the NATS server in this directory so I'm gonna get rid of the, the zip file I won't need that anymore. And so if I want, I could go into this directory. And of course, you know, if I use my bad program here, I do readme, I can look at the documentation. Another thing that I can possibly do is, you know, open it up on my text editor or something to read the documentation, but that's good enough. Now, 
now that I have the binary, I can run it. So I could do NAT server, and if I do this minus H, you can see that I'll, um, for those of us who are on Mac, we have this issue. Um, I'm going to ignore that for now and cancel it. And rather, once I try to run that, I can go to preferences. It's telling me at all it doesn't know that file essentially, and it notices I download it. So to protect my system, it wants to delete it. Um, but in, if you go here, you say cancel and do allow, you know, and then you go back here and you rerun it. It should run fine. And then if you get this message now, instead of moving to trash or canceling, what you do is you say open and that's it. And after those two things, now it should run fine. And you can see um, it doesn't bother me anymore um, or bug me about um, anything. But this is the NAT server application here. And so you can see bind to this address or, you know, if you're talking about a specific um, address um, interface on your computer, you can say bind to that. And this is the port you want to bind to, port six, you know, um, the default is 4222. And so, for example, I can say, let me start the NAT server. Um, let's see here, um, see what other options. So minus P, I'm not gonna give it a name. Uh, let's see, HTTP port, the monitoring port. Um, the default there was, um, before was 8222. And then we had the routing port, um, which I'm going to ignore. Okay, so let's see how we, let's clean up here. And let me do run this again, and I do minus P. And this time I'm not gonna do 4222, I'm actually gonna do 4322, right? Because remember my Docker's already have one listening to that port. And so for my monitoring, I'll do, uh, I can't remember what, what that was the monitoring port, but I'll ignore that for now. And so if I do that and run this, and you can see, I'm running it and this is a slightly newer version and not what's in Docker, but that's fine. That's one of the reasons why you might want to do the pull first if you are ready, because I did this a while back, so I have an older one. Um, but if you you know want the most recent, then do a pull. And you can see the server is ready, just like it said server is ready up here. Now this is all you need. Once you have this up and running. Um, you're good. So I have two at this point, I only really need one. So I'm gonna kill one of them. So now that everyone has their NAS service up, server up and running, how can we use it? Well, you can go back here to NAT's homepage and then click on download. And you click on download. This is also a shorter way to get to the server as you can see, just install and if you click here you get to the same list of servers and so on you could download the latest you can do official docker thing um, and if you remember i mentioned that that will not support a about 40 clients so here you'd find um, links to all those clients on github the ones with a star is what the nats team maintain but you can see people have contributed a bunch of other ones and variation too, right? So there are multiple Python ones and so on. But we don't care about all that. What we're looking for is this special NAT CLI that allows us to do things like subscribe and publish and a whole bunch of other things, manage our NATs um, cluster and our NAT server, but we will learn more about that later. So to get to that, what you wanna do is you can click on GitHub up here and then you can come and look for NAT CLI. Um, so, so repo, and let's see, repo, repo, fine. So you can do NAT CLI, and there it is. This is the NAT CLI. Of course, you can navigate directly to it by going to github.com forward slash nats.io forward slash NAT CLI. And once you get here, you'll see the command line utility to interact with and manage your NAT server. And this, since it's written in Go, it's going to run on, again, whatever systems you have. And it has all these features. Again, we don't care about all that, but this is how you install it. Now, if you're on a Mac like me, you run these two commands, and that's exactly what I run to install mine. And you just follow the installation that's appropriate for your particular platform. All right, so once you have that installed, so I'm gonna assume that you have NAT CLI installed. Once you have it installed, it's gonna give you this command called NATS. And if you run it like this, you will see that you can do things, like I said before, you can subscribe, you can publish, B-U-B, 
publish, and a bunch of other things. Uh, for now, all we care about is being able to publish and subscribe. And so I'm assuming that's how you have this. So let's go from there. So with that install, what you can do is you can say that publish, or I want to publish a message to a topic or subject. So what is that topic or subject? Let's just call it weather. And it doesn't have to be uppercase, right? Like it could be lowercase. And so whether that now, for example, I don't know, we can get into um, the different ways that you can to, you can give a topic its name and so on. But for now, just go along with my suggestion or exactly how I'm doing it until you read the documentation to know why. Um, so I can give it whether that now, you know, or whether that US that now, or, you know, maybe I'm getting whether that world, I don't know. So something like that. So let's just go whether that US maybe. Um, maybe what I want to do is um, probably something on events, a topic called events that um, now or events that local, right? And so that's the topic I want to publish on. And then I can do, here's the message, hello, right? That's it. And it sends a message. And you can see publish five bytes to this topic. So any other subscriber who was interested in events that local would get that message. And so let's do that. Let's get a subscriber. And so let me make this, open this up a bit. And to open this up a bit. Oh, uh, you know what? Let me actually put this up here like this. And so let's do it that way. And so let me make my subscriber here. I'm gonna do not subscribe. And I want to subscribe on events that local. And I press enter, and now you see I'm subscribed to that event. And then I come down here and I publish, and you can see the event was received up there, right? And I can publish more events. It doesn't have to be that, right? And um, publish also has, if you do minus H, you're going to see that oh, it has this count um, that you can do. And it also has some other um, available templates that you can use if you know what Go template. And so essentially what you can do is sort of create a message. Now, let me see if I could create one where I can say like count uh, minus minus count, let's do minus minus count. And so let me do, um, let's do 10, let's do 100. And then I think um, the message I want to do is just say message, colon, and then go template. I think it's count, um, I think like that. And, and so that would send a message, um, those messages that you could see, message 199, because I put the count back in there. Um, if again, if I did um, the help on this and let's zoom in and check it out, you can see that um, there's some other things there. Timestamp, unit, Unix, Unix Nano, time, ID, random message between um, these two values, min and max. So we should be able to call that too. So let's do this. And then I do, um, let's do MSG. Um, so so our data, let's call it data. And so this message one, message two, and then this is the data. And then I'm gonna do that. And I think what it's called random. And if you don't know Go template, don't worry about it. And I wanna do a minimum message of 10 characters to 100 characters, let's say. I think that's how that's done. And so it sent those 10 messages. And as you can see here, we receive it on that subject. And so this is really good for some quick testing because you can just easily type the subscribe and thing. But hopefully you see how powerful this little app is. It's about 10 megs or something, but it's really awesome. I really love it. I don't think that it replaces gRPC, nothing like that. You guys see a bunch of capabilities in NAS though. I like to actually use it with gRPC, with WebSockets. We're gonna get to all that NAT in this little like filler set of videos, but when we actually cover NATS. Um, I'm still gonna do about two or three more filler videos on NATS, but at least hopefully this pique your interest and you're super excited to play with NATS and also to do it with me when we finally cover it. If you can't wait and you go ahead and you start messing with it, 
hey, more power to you. It's really, really lovely piece of software and the documentation is super awesome. I encourage you to, to check it out if um, you need to start using it. Hopefully we can do, you know, get on these things and do more frequent videos very soon. I can at least say now that I have a new role at a new company. And so um, we'll see, all right, we'll see. And so I start a new role in um, two weeks time and I'll be able to have a better idea how things look going forward. All right, then. thanks for your time. As usual, take care.